good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alina Rocha Menocal, and I'm a research fellow here at the Overseas Development Institute in Politics and Governance. And I am very pleased to welcome you at ODI today, and I have to apologize for the symbolic nature of uh, what is happening with our meeting today. If I didn't know better and I wasn't from Mexico, I would think that the drug lords are out to get us <laughs> <laughs> because we had uh, some bad luck with, uh, well, with the fog uh, this morning and one of our uh, main speakers is uh, in transit right now from Heathrow, but uh, you may know traffic in London is not always on your side. So hopefully she will be coming and I apologize for starting the, mean, uh, the meeting late. I think this might be a first in the history of ODI, and I'm sorry to be the culprit of it, so really I apologize. But I am really delighted to have on board um, a great panel today on a question and topic that is of, I think, fundamental importance to the quality of democratic governance across the developing world and also the developed world, but somehow is uh, out of the radar of a lot of the work that development actors do. And this is obviously the topic of dirty money um, in politics. And um, this event today is part of a meeting series that we have been spearheading here at ODI in close partnership with both International Idea and BBC Media Action, um, again on the topic of, of elections um, and the quality of democratic governance, which itself as a meeting series is part of a broader initiative on that uh, very topic with different um, types of activities that we have been uh, developing over the past year or so. Um, part of the um, uh, part of the uh, outputs that we have produced as part of the initiative include a, a, a booklet on in, an infographics book booklet on ten things to know about elections and uh, elections and democracy that you may have seen. We have also done quite a few things related to podcasts and blogs, and if you want to find out more about it, there is a dedicated page about this initiative on the ODI website, appropriately titled ODI on Elections. So I welcome you to uh, take a look at that if you're interested. The inspiration for this particular panel today with this uh, very nice um, uh, set of speakers, um, both here physically in the room and also uh, via VC, which also did not collaborate with us, so it has to be uh, via audio today, um, was inspired in a way through conversations that I have been having with International IDEA on a very interesting project that they have spearheaded with other partners, mostly in the Netherlands, on the topic of protecting politics from illicit flows. Um, appropriately, the, the idea for that project started with Mexico wanting to find out a little bit about illicit uh, campaign finance in, in the country. Um, and from there, a much broader project has been spearheaded uh, by IDEA and, and others, uh, which has consisted of uh, some very in-depth case studies across different regions of the world, including Latin America, the Baltics, and West Africa. And here today we will be hearing a little bit uh, from those uh, who, who were involved in those case studies, and they will be sharing some insights. Uh, but we're also bringing um, other people who will comment on the topic um, outside of the IDEA project. Uh, Without further ado, I will perhaps uh, move the, the, the panel to, uh, well, I will place the panel in the capable hands of Landre, who's joining us uh, today uh, very specially. He is the editor of This is Africa uh, from the Financial Times, and it's a real pleasure to have him here uh, doing this for us. Um, but just before I let go, uh, just to say that if there there are any Twitterati among you, and I don't know if that's the right terminology for people who engaging tweeting activity. But if you do, um, there is a hashtag which is political financing, um, and you're very welcome to do that because at the end of this meeting we'll be creating a Storyfy. All right, thank you so much. And we have had to adjust uh, the setup of the meeting because our star speaker, as I said, is not here, but Lanry will guide us through that. <coughs> thank you very much, Alina. Um, apparently in the movies they say never work with animals and never work with children. It seems in events, what I'm learning is never work with Skype or video conferencing because uh, it, uh, it tends to sort of uh, break down right when you need it the most. Um, thanks very much for the introduction. Before we get going, there are a few points of housekeeping that need to be observed. For firstly, uh, welcome to you all. Thank you very much for coming. And as this is the digital age, thank you very much for everyone in cyberspace who's watching us. I think they're up there. Um, 
it's uh, a few things to, to state. The event is on the record, so you can share whatever you want uh, that is discussed today on Twitter or by any other means. Uh, if the fire alarm sounds, make their way out through the uh, doors by the ODR reception. It's just around the corner, so we're in luck. Uh, please uh, turn off your mobile phones, or more realistically, turn them silent so that we can uh, focus on the discussion. And uh, there are publications related to this event and ODI's work on the table outside and on the stands and recep reception area. So if you want to read uh, more about what ODI is doing in this respect, please pick one up. Uh, and then lastly, please speak into the mic. Noted. Okay, so uh, to introduce the topic, firstly, let me commend ODI for uh, hosting an event on this topic because, as Alina just said, it's one of those issues that isn't particularly, uh, it's, it's not a positive uh, story. It is not really an uplifting aspect of sort of, you know, the global economy, the global shadow economy, whatever you want to call it. But the global tr drug trade and its relationship uh, with politics, the political process, especially the democratic process, I think is a really important issue to understand. Now, my day job, I'm not an expert on Latin America or the Baltic states, uh, but uh, I, do, I do focus on Africa. And um, it's one of those issues that is, uh, that is quite frequently omitted at conferences and discussions around Africa and the African growth story because it doesn't fit uh, the narrative of progress. But what, what, uh, what we know now is that already in a few short years, the drug trade has started to have an impact on West Africa. And we're going to be exploring the extent to which politics is uh, affected by illicit, the illicit drug trade and what that means for developing regions like West Africa, for Latin America, and obviously for the Baltic states as well. Now, as Alina mentioned, one of our speakers is absent, but allow me to very quickly um, introduce uh, our speakers and uh, our speaking order. So the format of discussion will be as follows. Each speaker, two of which are here with, uh, with us right now, one more will be joining us at some point, and there are two who are joining us. They were supposed to join us by video conference. They no longer are. They're joining us by telephone. Um, and each will, in turn, present for about 10 minutes. Uh, there's a 12-minute limit, and I have been instructed to stop you after 12 minutes, so don't take it personally. Um, <laughs> and uh, in, in I'll start with those who are here. To my, to my left is uh, Frank Okieri, who is a research fellow, the Faculty of Academic Affairs and Research, Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center in Accra, Ghana. To my right is Artis Velt, who is uh, Deputy Chief of the Latvia State Police. Uh, in absentia, I'd like to introduce Catalina Uribe Bucher, who is representing International Idea, and once she when she joins us, um, I look forward to her presentation as well. And joining us uh, via the telephone are Camino Cavana, who is the editor and lead researcher of the CIC NYU publication Getting Smart and Scaling Up, responding to the impact of organized crime in developing countries, and Francesca. Uh, Recanatini, who's senior economist, public sector and governance, Middle East and North Africa at the World Bank. Uh, before I hand over to Artis for the first presentation, uh, just a couple of words. Uh, in researching the, the topic today, I came across a statistic that said global, the illicit drug trade, the global illicit drug trade is worth $435 billion annually, apparently. I don't know how up to date that figure is. Uh, and uh, the cocaine trade alone, which is particularly relevant to West Africa, is worth close to $100 billion a year. Now, it may be criminal and it may be morally abhorrent, but what I see there is big business. And we all know about the relationship between big business and politics, even in functioning democracies such as the United States, where big business legally uh, influences the political system. We can see the impact that has on the political process and the democratic process. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing uh, these case studies from, from, from different regions, looking at the same issue and what the experience has been. Uh, and we'll start with you, Artis, uh, for your perspective. 